يا من هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الرحمن الرحيم المالك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر الخالق الباري المصور الغفار أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله I seek refuge from the evils of Satan and I begin in the name of God Almighty the most gracious the most merciful Dearest beloved, divine friends, family, brothers and sisters. The glorious month of the Ramadan visits us again now in 2023. And in case there is a repeat, 2024, 2025 or forever as mankind exists. As a declaration of Allah of the importance of this month. For all times in the past, Ramadan was a thing that was prescribed. A thing holy. A thing most divine. So my intention here, beloved brothers and sisters, at the opening of the Ramadan, that is the 22nd, inshallah it might be tomorrow, the 23rd or the 24th. Depends on school of thought and the moon. Personally, I, Haji Dr. Roshan Khan, and my family, and those of science, we believe tomorrow will be the day of the fast. But because of cooperation, national importance, regional importance, we might go along because the Quran says it could be 29 or 30 days. So a day is neither here nor there. And sometimes I was fast on the day and if it's 29 days, we find out and some other people are doing it on the 30th, on, on the 30th day as well before they celebrate the Eid, I, I might go along and do the extra fast. But my brothers and sisters, this is a time and a thing. Fellow Muslims, Muslims of uh, around the world, non-Muslims, need to understand that we believe they also had injunctions and instructions to observe this period of fasting. The Christians, brothers and sisters, are observing the Lent. And those who are observing the Lent are as fasting they are fasting as rigorous as the Muslims do, those who truly observe the Lent. Our Hindus and other their own brothers and sisters, many times they are fasting because of the many religious days that they have in a year. And they fast in their own way. They will consume some sweet, some milk, but no meats. And there's a reason for that. The reason for that, friends and families, is because they're supposed to be vegetarians. And so they do not imbibe, or those who are real vegetarians do not imbibe the animalistic instincts and the feelings that comes with the consumption of meat and the slaughtering of animals. 
But today, it is my opinion in respect to my brothers and sisters of Sanat and Adharu, that many of them, most of them consume animal flesh. And under the circumstances, to my opinion, they should be fasting also as rigorous as do the Muslims and the Christians of Lent. But that is a thing for their scholars to think about, but in love for a religion that has such great honor and respect Sanatana Dharam, a.k.a. Hinduism, but that's a different topic to talk about, explain what is Hinduism and who is a Hindu and what is Sanatana Dharam really is. But that's something for another time. This fasting is something extremely important. And I will try to give you a beautiful, calm ride on the roller coaster of wisdom and knowledge from my head. But let us remember, this is a presentation of the electric mosques, presentation of the teachings of Islam, striving to bring Islam to the world, into hearts, into minds, into the sky, the sea, and the earth, to the waters, to the rivers, the oceans, the air, all of which are Muslims, and the vegetables the trees and the grass and the jungles and everything on the earth give, and give thanks and praise to God and they're all Muslims. A Muslim who's one who submit himself to the will of God. Please check YouTube, Electric Mosque Guyana, Facebook, Electric Mosque Guyana and share. The Holy Quran tells us, and I'm doing it in a very, this presentation, in a very uh, relaxed atmosphere, sitting, chatting, gaffing, so to say, and not giving a lecture, but talking and trying to get into the hearts of the Muslims and to under the non Muslims to understand the rigorousness, the importance of the rigorousness of the Islamic fast, in which we cannot drink water from before sunrise and we cannot eat from before the sunrise but you can take some at that time and not to overdo it at the fast of day doing your business and your chores and your affairs and your life and your work and then worshiping God, Almighty, the Creator, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, with all your heart and all your dedication. And you try with all your minds and all of your hearts to be righteous, to be charitable, to be kind. And as I go along, maybe in this segment, or another that I will do for next week, inshallah, to cover areas of importance, including the health benefits of the fast. So the Holy Quran, in this the presentation of the Atrip Mosque's teachings of Islam, as I help to propagate, teaches us Allah is speaking through the beautiful words of our Prophet Muhammad, which is embellished. The words are from Allah and the Prophet merely recited. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before thy time. That you may achieve taqwa. Taqwa stands for God consciousness. It stands for 
good righteousness stand for being kind to the universe, to Allah, to humanity, to yourself. Taqwa, God fearingness, God consciousness, God realization. So fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed before thy time that you may achieve taqwa, God consciousness, which involves all the great and the good things in service and worship of Allah and service to humanity. Now, that brings out another thing that I wish to share here, and I might have done it in the past. Another great wisdom. The good consciousness is also refers, also referring to a name, a title of the righteous. God righteous, God consciousness, God divine, God holy. That the fasting helps to bring this out because of the charitable aspect of the taqwa. God centered this and it's called Kidmat ul Insan. It doesn't go exactly with this verse of the Grand Al Baqarah, the cow, the second chapter of the Holy Quran. It doesn't go exactly, but it's in there. We are called, in this case, Kidmat ul Insan. So, the fasting helps to bring out all this goodness so that Kidmat ul Insan, which you become, is service to humanity is the greatest of service to God Almighty. Kidmat ul Insan. Service mankind. Our Hindu brothers and sisters have a very beautiful or Sanatana Dharam, I prefer to call them as children of Sanatana Dharam. The universal law. Sanatana Dharam stands for the universal law. They call it Karam Yoga. Service to humanity is the greatest of karma by service mankind, by service to humankind or living creatures or everything in the sky, the sea and the earth showing charity. Kidmatul Insan, Karamyo. You see, my job generally as an ambassador for peace of the Universal Peace Federation and as a general goodwill ambassador of humanity and love for all religions and ethnicities and all peoples cause me to have this heart of love for everyone dearest beloved divine friends and family and for all the religions so now it is the Lent observed by the righteous children of Christianity the real religion that was started by St. Paul and Jesus Christ the Lord of Nazareth Isa alayhi salam in Islam observed the Ramadan all the prophets from time immemorial and all the peoples of the world observed Ramadan and so this Christian they also are known to be some of the most humane, kind, decent and charitable people. So they also have what they would call in the English language as service to God through service to man. So I'm celebrating here the commence commencement of the Ramadan. I'm also 
celebrating the oneness of God's revelation to all peoples of the world. I wonder why there is a, I can't recall the, the, the verse right away in my head, or people of the world, Quran, let us come to an equitable proposition as between you and us that we worship one God Almighty and we comprise one common brotherhood. Some translation has it as all people of the book and the book refers to those people who had revelation and not necessarily a printed book because God Almighty also tells us in the Quran that O Muhammad you shall believe in the name of God Almighty, most gracious, most merciful, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. O oh, Muhammad, you shall believe in that which is being revealed to you. That is when he was receiving the revelation. And you shall believe in that which was revealed before thy time. So we Muslims must respect the other religions and their books, but we know for a fact many books were interpolated, and that is a scientific fact or interference, but we must respect them in any case. So I want to take a rest from that universality of fasting for now and to speak about some of the benefits to ourselves and the benefits to humanity at large. It is also believed and that the Ramadan is one of the longest and most severe form of fasting and that the Ramadan means fire, the blazing fire. It is the hottest time in the day in Arabia. And it is also the hottest time when we who will not eat food or drink water, where our stomachs will burn with the fire. And with this burning, there is a romance of divine love between your Allah, your God, and you. Nobody knows if you are fasting unless you tell them. So fasting is this divine romance as the word is coming to my head to bring it forward of a God that loves us, that he wants us to do without things that he has approved. No food, no water, no romance between husband and wife during at least the daylight hours. And the Quran tells us simply, and I gave you a bit earlier, it does not say, ladies and gentlemen, um, brothers and sisters, or fasting is commanded upon you, fasting is ordered upon you, even though it's a farce, it's, a com it's a technically a compulsion, you need to do it once you can do it. And don't make excuses that your stomach is born you, or you get upset stomach. That is not good because that problem that you have could be eliminated by the proper fasting. But it does not say you are commanded. It says fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before thy time. So, ladies and gentlemen, you in the electric mouth, yes, you, tell me who prescribes? Who gives a prescription? And why? When you are sick, you go to a doctor, and if the doctor feels you need a prescription, he's going to give you a prescription to get the right medicine. So in this Quran, Allah's last settlement, Allah's last settlement of a testament to humanity. It uses the word prescribed. 
that you may achieve God-centeredness, or let us put now in another translation, healing from Allah. The fasting in reality is a healing for our hearts and our minds. And many of this will be covered more and more as I go along. So my beloved divine friends and families, brothers and sisters on the fast, let me start with the burning within. This burning that takes place when a person cannot eat from let us say 4 or 4.30 in the morning to 6 or 6.15 at night cannot take anything. And there's not a science there. When we take something at that time, it has to be a little bit of tea, a little bit of water, a date, something very small. Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, used to take a date or a half of a date, chew it and drink it with some water. It energizes the body and prepare the body for food. Then we go and pray. So as you pray now, when you do that prayer, I will say like yoga, if you all realize, ladies and gentlemen, the Islamic prayer postures is a simplified yoga that can solve any problem in our body that you do severe yoga. But yoga by itself is a great institution and a knowledge. But I'm just advising those who can do the yoga to do the Islamic prayer postures. It's on YouTube. It's all over the place and easy to get. Now, so I digressed a bit for a, for a minute or two there concerning the postures of the, of the Islamic prayer. So we go to do the Islamic prayer, then we go and have a meal. You have to have a decent meal. And that is good, fair balance. Some people eat too much. Some people, when they break the fast, they're filling the stomach. And so we defeat those who do that, the purpose of the fast. It is to calm the system and give the system a rest. So you eat some food, you eat smartly and don't overburden the body. Beloved divine friends, brothers and sisters, you don't overburden the body have not having had food all day long. So that is it, you consume the meal, but the point is that burning within us causes us, the Muslim, to be most charitable, to be most kind and genteel, to share with the non-Muslims. And with this in mind, I want you to know and remember that the, the Ghana Islamic Forums, the Masjid Al-Munawara, is the only one that was, has been able to upkeep a feeding program for the street people and for the Dharamsala and the Palms. And I, that's a compliment to the organization we call the Guyana Islamic Forum, the, the masjid with which my family and I and others, Imam Rashid, so on, helped to found, called the Masjid al Munawar, the feeding program. Now, what the point I'm getting at? The point I'm getting at is that because we feel this burning with it, this hungry, this not drinking water, what it, because we feel that, and in the beginning, the first two, three, four days, your body gets weak, but then it gets adjusted, amazingly. But this burning causes us to understand hunger. To understand what it's like to be in a state of poverty and without food, beloved divine friends and families. This fasting of the Ramadan, day after day, night after night, in prayer, all day, in med meditation and prayer and work, and worshipping causes us to feel the empathy, the care for the hungry, for the less fortunate. 
So in Islam, we have something, remember telling you about the Kitmatul Insan earlier, doesn't mean we have to take care only of the Muslims. Zakah or Zakat, as we call it, is only for Islam and the Islamic community or peoples. But there is another very important criterion of charity and love in Islam. Another taxation, the zakat is a taxation by God. And we must comply with the government taxation in a nation. But the other one, now a third taxation, is Kairat. So what is Kairat? I've done this many times. It's the voluntary charity. The voluntary charity that you give to any human being, any person of any religion, a money, a love, a care, even a smile could be charity. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace and blessings of God, peace be upon him, told us even a smile can be charity because you might not have yourself. When the Prophet used to take, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, his food, and his dates, even the last one that he got, and share with his people or others. This is the secret and the glory and the power of Islam and of Ramadan. Because we cannot give only to the Muslim community, but to every community. Even a hungry, stray dog or animal on the road. And we see that they're hungry or they're following us. It means something. They recognize you, that you're a good being, and they're hungry. So give them something to eat. This is Islam. This is Islam. This is the religion of God. Beloved, divine, friends, and family. So I've given you a welcome to the Ramadan. That fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before thy time that you may achieve god centeredness god righteousness and I've started the journey on this, let us say, this train of wisdom and knowledge, the train of life. Let us remember how many people we knew last year are no longer there. They have passed. Some of us are 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and might believe we will not die. And do things in a manner, behaving that we will not die. But die we must. So let us who are alive, do all that we can do to embellish our souls. So that fasting is prescribed for us, that as it was prescribed before thy time, that you may achieve God-centeredness, God-consciousness, technically, also, in addition to Kidmat al insan, it means to embellish our hearts, our souls, our extreme being, inner and outer, because it's a complete manifestation of beauty and divinity and goodwill in worship of God Almighty, fulfilling his injunction and taking the medication called fasting. The fasting goes with the namaz, that is the salah or the prayer, the postures with God, as much in the night, late in the mornings, as much as in the day and late into the evening, extra and excesses prayers, not only the compulsory ones. So, time is coming upon me, beloved divine friends, family, brothers and sisters. So this is the introduction to the Ramadan and Ramadan Kareem, Ramadan Mubarak, a time when we, the Muslims, will do without food, without legal relationships, without water, a time when we can raise our voice or speak loud. A time when we keep away from all things that's halal or approved. And more prayers and more prayers with all this fasting 
which terrify people, but which liberates the human mind and the human soul and raises to the glory of Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala as righteous servants. I hope you have enjoyed this sermon and that I've made in a very conversational presence and presentation without any book, without any diary, without anything to have a chat with you. La ilaha illallah. And we the Muslims usually are happy to do away with all these things, the food, the water, the drink, give away our money, love humanity, pray more. And but just why? Because of the command of Allah. He commands and prescribes. And we're happy to do this with smile and joy and anxiety all year long for this holy month to come along so it may take us to paradise. Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La ilaha illallah Allahu Akbar Wallahu Akbar Wallahi al La ilaha illallah La ilaha illallah La ilaha illallah Now you can stretch your hand Touch Allah's Quran For blessings Stretch your hands Using the power of electricity Touch my hand, some say they like to touch it. But first of all, touch Allah's Quran. Touch my hand as I pray for you, O Allah. All who are unwell, raise them and give them protection. And give them peace and joy in their life. And make our country glorious. Peace to our Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. And all the Sahabas and all the Prophet. Our President, His Excellency. Dr. Irfan Ali, the entire government, our Honorable Minister of Agriculture, Assalamu Alaikum, to uh, K.J. Juman Yasin, Ramadan Kareem, Ramadan Mubarak, and all my other friends who are not coming to mind, Raymond Aziz, Salam, the members of the Ghana Islamic Forum, the Masjid Al Munawra, Salamu Alaikum, peace and blessings, Ramadan Kareem, and to the entire country and world. May Allah bless you. I protect you. Ya man huwa Allahu allazi la ilaha illa huwa ar-rahman ar-rahim al-malik al-quddus as-salam al-mu'min al-muhaybin al-aziz al-jabbar al-mutakabbir al-khaliq al-bari al-musawir al-ghaffar